right, let's take a look at an alternative to the costly smart draw or Visio programs used to draw the floor plans for use on private properties virtual tours. So what I'm going to show you today is a web-based application which is free of charge uh, and can also be used on any computer of your choice as long as it has an internet connection. So to get started I want you to open up your internet browser whether it be Google Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer or Safari. I open it up and in my address bar I type in the address www.smallblueprinter.com forward slash floor plan forward slash floor plan dot html once you've entered in this address and it starts loading the page I suggest you take this address and save it as a favorite bookmark so it will appear on a bookmark bar such as these icons I have here so after floor planner has loaded it will take a while actually just to load the application up on your web browser depending on your internet speed but once it's loaded up it will give you a welcome screen such as this one it's going to give you the option to start with a new plan or to open an existing plan. Now, almost in every case, you're going to start with a new plan. So I'll just go ahead and click on it, and the application will open. Now, here I have a whole lot of options that I can use over here, which we'll get into a little bit later. You have uh, Objects Inspector over here as well as information regarding the certain object over here. You'll see under the Objects Inspector we have plenty different categories that you can choose from. Here we have our canvas or our piece of paper that we can draw on and here we have a preview tab as well to take a look and see what our drawing will look like. Now it's always advisable when we start drawing our plan to orientate it in a portrait view which means that you're going to have your drawing running long ways down the page and not across. So I'm going to start off now by drawing my first line. Now by default it opens up on walls and fixtures. I can take one of these walls so I can just click on it and it will automatically follow my mouse to wherever I want to put it and I can place it down by clicking again if I were to click on the wall again it will show me these little blue control dots here which I can use to manipulate the wall and I can see what length I'm manipulating the wall to by looking at this little info box here so currently I can see my wall is 5.75 meters I can then bring in another wall by just clicking on it and placing it on my canvas, clicking on it again and manipulating it. That is the one way to draw your walls. I'm going to show you a much easier way now so I'm just going to delete all of this by selecting it all and pushing the delete key on my keyboard. I go over to tools and here it's going to give me a bunch of options. I want you to keep it on walls and fences as it is. You can see walls and fences are selected here. And go into your style and click on the solid black line. Now here it gives me a couple of options to draw walls. So I'm going to click on this first one that looks like an S. If I click on that and I come over to my canvas, I click once with my mouse and it'll drag the wall along to the size that I want. So in this case I'm going to make the wall 3 meters. I'm going to click again with my mouse just once and it's going to start drawing a new wall. Once I have my desired length I click again and it'll start drawing a new wall. I click again and I start drawing a new wall. Now once your room is complete you need to double click to stop it from adding a new wall. So I'm going to go ahead and double click now and there's my first room. If I were to add on an additional room to this one 
I can just go ahead and click on the little S again and as close as possible get to the corner of your previous room click there and it'll automatically start pulling it across I click again and I pull it down and once I'm complete I double click to end it so there we have a basic structure now with two rooms I'm just going to go ahead and draw another one over here Okay, so what I've done now is I've drawn a basic structure of a home by using the walls. I've included all the walls regarding or pertaining to this house as what, it, as what I've got off my draft floor plan. And I have my basic structure in place. The next thing I need to do is add where the doors are. So I'm going to go back up top here to Objects. Click on Objects and go to doors and windows in my subcategory over here so I'm just going to go down and here I have these two door styles over here which I can use so I'm going to go ahead and just drag a door in and put it down wherever I want to and I'll go ahead and put in all the doors where they need to be You'll see that it's actually putting the doors in the wrong orientation. But once we've placed all our doors, we can go ahead and actually turn these around. So it's just to get the doors in for now in the respective places. Alright, so once I have all my doors set into place, I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit over here. I need to take these and turn them into the right position. So for you to turn them, I want you to click on it and you'll see it will show up blue. That means that that object is selected. Now up top here, you can rotate this in whichever way you like and then just take it and move it into position so I'm just going to rotate all of these until I have them the way I want them when drawing your floor plan it doesn't matter what orientation your door is in whether it's going to the left or to the right, it really doesn't matter. Okay, we have our doors in place. Now, there's one problem that I'm sitting with here. I need to put an opening in this wall here, and I need to put an opening into this wall over here. Now to get your openings, go back to Tools, make sure your style is on the white one and not the black one as what we had it before. So click on the white one and you can click on your S again and I'm just going to put an opening in here. There we go. And I'll just move that into place. and let me go up to the top one and put that in there perfect we have our openings we have our doors as what they should be the next step is to enter text now if you come up here to the add label if I click on that 
and go onto my canvas, I can put that text label wherever I want it. Now the easiest what I've found is to just go and for everyone just put in the default text label for now and then later on we will change all of them at the same time. Alright, so we have our labels in for all our rooms and areas that we want to label. I'll then start with one of them, so click on it. And you'll see that your inspector over here changes to the label. So the color black is fine, and here I can now put in my label. And as you type, you'll see it'll, in real time, change over there. The size, always important to take it up to 22. Okay, that one is done. I'm going to move it into place nicely. And I will move across to the next one. So I click on it. And I label it. If in this case you see it doesn't fit in like this, while it's still selected, just go and turn it around. Okay, great. I have all my labels in place. The next step that we need to do is indicate where we done the virtual tours. So, with your tools uh, tab selected over here, I want you to go up to your square that you get here. And if you mouse over on the square, you'll see that it'll give you an option to draw a rounded square and a circle as well. I want you to click on the circle you can just draw a tiny little circle like that should do and while that circle is selected you can change the color to I'll just make sure it's selected there we go it's selected you can change the color to any blue that you want okay so there we've changed our little circle to blue and I'm going to duplicate this a few times. Alright, I'm going to take our zoom in a little bit so I can see what's going on and actually place my circles where they should be. Let me just get them all separated here. Alright, so let's place the first one And the second one. Brilliant. So all my little blue dots are there, which indicate where I've done my, my virtual tours. I have my room labels in. I have my doors and openings in place. I can now go ahead and save this floor plan. So in order to save it I want you to go up here next to the design tab which we're currently working in click on the preview tab. It's going to show you an overview of your your floor plan and it's going to give you options on the side here to print it or to export it as an image which we want to do. Make sure that the JPEG image format is selected and currently you'll see it's giving us a size of 532 by 645. I want you to click on custom size and on the width change your width to 320. Okay so once you've selected JPEG you've set in your 320 width go to export as image and let's export it to our desktop, so select your desktop here 
and in the file name I want you to type in the reference number which is associated with this floor plan. This will be the private property reference number and end it off with floor plan. Now very important here is to put in the suffix of .jpg. Once you've put in .jpg, click on save and let's go to our desktop and take a look at this. Okay, there it is. Let's have a look and see what it looks like. That's perfect. Now this floor plan over here can be used can be put in the folder now that floor plan can be put in the folder with the rest of your virtual tour photographs as such and once that's done you can just create a zip file of that and send it off to private property via the FTP In this instance we have drawn a single story unit or a single story home with just one level. If we were to have a double story or a multi-level property, our floor plan is going to change slightly. You're going to start off by drawing your bottom level as what we have done over here. And if you want to add in stairs, let's say for instance we have a staircase over here in our lounge or our dining area. If I want to add in stairs I go to objects and under structural you'll find a staircase there that you can use. So it's very important to also indicate the stairs if you have a multi-level property. Once I've finished with the stairs on the bottom level and it is complete as what it is here I'm going to go ahead and save it as I did the previous one with the same dimensions but the difference is when I export it I'm going to save it as the reference number and instead of saying floor plan I'm going to say ground floor. Once I've saved the ground floor floor plan I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this and redraw my upstairs plan and in the same method once I've drawn my upstairs plan go to your preview export as image make sure it's 320 under custom size and you're going to then export it as the reference number and first floor So with a multi-level you're going to sit with two different floor plans at the end of the day which both need to be sent with your virtual tour photographs to private property via the FTP.